Hey guys, welcome to Late Invoices. On today's episode, we are joined by a very special guest, CJ Ducker. How are you, mate? I'm good, man. I'm excited. Good. I'm trying to think when we met now. So it was probably about four or five years ago. Long time. It was a long time ago, yeah. and it was at Gymshark. Was yeah. it a Gymshark event, or hey, I'm trying to think back to the first time we met. Is this when we both awkwardly say at the same time, we don't remember? We don't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pro- probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Um, uh, no, but I, I think we touched on it just before, where Wingstop is probably... Would that have been the first one? Or I might have met you in the HQ, I can't remember, but like five years ago when I was shooting for like some stuff with Gymshark and that was when Elliot just signed for Gymshark. So obviously like I was getting more exposed to like the creative team and like coming to HQ and all that kind of stuff. We probably met around then Mm -hmm. and then at several events and several shoots I've seen you obviously like around and stuff like that. Um, but it's good to touch base and have you back in today because you've been on yeah. quite a journey since then. Yeah, no, <laughs> a lot's think, changed. Yeah, the, the journey of life that we're all on, right? A lot yeah. has changed. So, well, why don't you tell us what your role was at Gymshark first of all, and then we'll we'll go we'll go from there. Yeah, so I was drafted in as just your straight up videographer, but it had like a lot of sub requests to it. Yeah, uh, the main reason I was recruited at the time because uh, the first time I recruited, uh, I applied was like two, maybe twenty fourteen. Yeah. Or maybe even 2015, um, and I got denied. Oh, really? I didn't know that. And I tried again, and I got denied. Really? Okay. And I was like, God damn it, man! These guys don't want me. <laughs> and that was for videographer roles. Yeah, or... but I was like super, super fanboy. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, I wanted yeah. to be like No Mac. I wanted to be yeah. traveling, you know, with the athletes and everything. Yeah. Um, and then finally got the call in like 2018. Okay. Um, after I did quite a lot of good work yeah. freelancing, and now, the main re- were they passion projects? whilst i was doing the freelance work you said you did a lot of good freelance work oh yeah so like half of it was passion projects half of it was also just finding my way in the industry okay like good clientele work yeah yeah. um but then i finally got the call and you know the requests were we've seen you travel a lot you've done a lot of traveling you worked with clients abroad we're looking for someone to fill that role so we've got a lot of shoots in la new york and you know they're they're laying off what they need from me i was like yeah cool (laughs) like Yes, man. I don't even need a salary. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't yeah. even need a salary. Just I'll do it. You yeah. pay for my flights, hotel. Yeah. yeah I get yeah. to see the world. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's how it kind of like snowballed from there. Were you always interested in like videography and stuff before? Is it always been video? It's obviously like your role there, essentially like cinematographer, videographer. Um, but is it always been video? Have you been interested in other creative areas? Like what were you doing before Gymshark? Yeah. So I feel like a lot of, for a lot of us, the hobby started like high school, maybe even like prime, you know, primary school, right? When we're young. Yeah. For me, it was uh, playing Call of Duty and making montages. Oh, oh so my you God, know yes. This, right? I no feel way. like we come from the same era now that you mentioned yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. the same age as us. No, but I mean like the same. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's not 100 years <laughs> old, mate. Obviously, I mean like the gaming <laughs> yeah, era. Look, there was a lot of video games. So that's exactly, Cameron's a big gamer. Yeah. I mean, I played a lot of Cardi Was Was yeah, a big yeah, gamer. Yeah, yeah, it just it drifts out now, but... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but that's yeah. exactly it. I was like, what did I spend most of my time in high school doing? Playing video games. Yeah. Um, I think it was when like Black Ops 2 came out and they came out with cinematic mode, right? Or theater mode, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you yeah. could actually go in the game and yeah. you can start placing dollies, cameras, yeah. and yeah. actually make cinematics. Yeah. You could like um, move through the map slowly yeah, yeah, yeah. and you all could, like track and yeah. everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what was that? Maybe 15, 16. And I was just being paid to edit people's montages. Really? Yeah. That was a really big. Uh, like community of people that would make like yeah, cod yeah, montage yeah. videos. I didn't know this yeah, world existed. Yeah. I oh, it was I huge. didn't know this world existed. <laughs> it was huge. And obviously, this is when YouTube. You know, if you had like even just 10k subscribers, you were the shit. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And you were making good money as well. Yeah. Um, and I got to. I don't know if you guys know, but I got the highest I got in was a team called Psycho. Right. And it had something like 400k subscribers at the time, right. which is it's massive, lot, right? Yeah. You think of like Phase, for example, yeah, what they are yeah. today. Back then, yeah. that was the go-to. Yeah. Um, and that's where it's stimulated from. So all the editing, all the cinematic creating process, I was like, yeah, this is sick. So I was an editor first. Okay. And then yeah, right. quote unquote cinematographer at the same time, even though I never had to pick up a camera. But you were doing it in game. Doing it oh, all in game. Wow. And I remember, yeah, getting that paycheck, creating like game trailers and montage trailers and montages. And I'm getting these paychecks when I'm in high school and I'm like, yeah, sick. Don't worry, guys. Like, skittles are on me when we go to the corner <laughs> shop. You know what I mean? I was bawling, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And then that's like, yeah, it's a whole spill. But like, I got my first camera at 16 as well. Uh, my dad bought it for me for Christmas. Uh, but I was a photographer first. 
I uh, okay. I didn't know that the camera had a video function. And then you switched oh, wow. to the dark side. After yeah, that. and then yeah. I think I was on. I mean, I was like taking pictures from my uncle's wedding or something. Okay, yeah. yeah. He's like, "Do you do video as well?" I was like, "Ah, oh, this camera doesn't do it." And I look at the camera, and I can see obviously the the tripod, you know, <laughs> yeah, box yeah. looking thing. And I was like, "Oh, hang on," switched it. I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, like yeah. I'm a videographer now, right? <laughs> yeah, you just switched, yeah, yeah. yeah. You just, just I, can, like that. I can just visualize like the camera like transforms like a transformer <laughs> yeah. like a video camera, and he's like, am, "Oh no, this is a camera." I am yeah. now a different being. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm like, yeah, I was way above it, um, and that's where, yeah, uh, it, it all just like snowballed from there. Um, I didn't even make it past college, hmm. uh, so I'm a college dropout. Oh, yeah. um, I tried to study film media. Yeah. I felt at that point the experience that I had garnered from editing, working with clients abroad, you know, um, through Skype back in the day, I was like, oh man, this sucks. Like, this is the first time ever in my history of learning that I would ask my teacher, can I have extra homework? Because like, yeah. I'm so far ahead at yeah, the time. Yeah. I was so far ahead. Um, he said, no, nah, like, you've got to stay on the curriculum. You've got to go from, you know, A to, yeah, to Z. Yeah. Jump through the I was like, yeah. no, nah, like, I've seen so much of the world already and the potential that it has for this. I want to get in on this. So much to my parents' dismay and outright, my, I'm half Asian, so my, my Asian parents were not were not happy about this. It's a high but, bar. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I dropped out and I was like, I'm just going to pursue this whole thing. Yeah. And it went horrible, as you can imagine, right? Freelancing is just horrible. And, wh- and why why did it go horrible? Because you've, you've done this a number of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've gone from... You know, in a job or college to yeah. freelance to yeah, full time yeah. job to freelance, and yeah, we'll keep yeah. coming back to this because what I really want to get out of you today is those tips and tricks and pieces of advice you've got for people that are listening to this podcast now. Mm. And I know there's definitely some out there that want to make the jump from full time like job or whatever yeah, to yeah, freelance yeah. or yeah, uni yeah. to freelance. Yeah. And it's a big world. But yeah. why did it go wrong the first time then? So the most obvious uh, factors that I can think about is one, my clientele was very very niche. Right. At this point, it yeah. was just people over Skype in, you know, gaming clans. Yeah. And the yeah. occasional thing would come through. Right. Yeah. So I was very reliant on this um, Lenovo laptop that I had that was like way too old. Yeah. I, you know, I cracked the codes for like Sony Vegas. And um, what was the other big one back then they used to edit on? Do you remember Cameron? iMovie? Yeah. Yeah. So, was it not on a Lenovo, but. Oh, Windows. Windows Movie Maker. Yeah, Windows oh. Movie Maker. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. I've used, I've used that, used that oh. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so oh, I, did that. <laughs> I did that and the laptop died on me pretty much as soon as I was like, yeah, I'm going to go freelance on this. Okay. But then also the byproduct of I've got no money. Yeah. Because I was young. Yeah. I didn't make a lot of money, but I made good money for yeah. a 15, 16 year old. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I was like, oh crap, I can't even afford a laptop. So now I can't do my work. Yeah. Crap, what do I do? So I've got this camera, but I don't have any clientele. So I was like, oh shit, like yeah. this is the worst start ever. Yeah. And then I went into like a really, really bad, like downward spiral of like depression yeah. at that time. Yeah. Because my parents disowned me at the right. time. So I couldn't get the support that I so needed. So were you living at home still? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you were. So yeah, imagine like, oh, hey mum, I've dropped out of college. Yeah. And then having to stay at home with your mum being mad at you yeah, like twenty four seven. Yeah. So I ended up just staying in my room for like months on end. Yeah had no way of contacting clients no way of it was, it was all bad like no prep yeah. whatsoever i was like i'm just gonna go straight for it yeah and it failed yeah miserably and so that's where if that didn't happen i definitely wouldn't be here today because went into a depression put on loads of weight and then i was like what else can i do in my life with no college qualifications no certificates to my name yeah um my uncle at the time he was a personal trainer so he's like oh well i can get you on a course you can just pay to get your qualifications at least as something yeah. right yeah so i did that got my qualifications trained clients for like three years at this point instagram had just come out with um instagram video do you remember oh. vine right yeah, yeah, yeah you had seven second videos yeah, yeah. and instagram were like well we're gonna give you 15 second videos yeah so that was like a really good transition point like i was you know 30 kg lighter than i am right now right. and i had all these contacts in the fitness industry and I had a camera. So I was like, sick, I'm gonna start filming myself in the gym, yeah. workout tutorials, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Before even like, at, at my knowledge at the time, before even influencers were doing it. We're yeah. doing it. Yeah. And so my colleagues at the gym would be like, how much can I pay you to do that for me? 
like can you film me in the gym mm. can you take photos for me i want to now bring up my social media presence yeah and then it just snowballed from there right so went from my client uh, my colleagues into my first couple of clients uh i pay a lot of tribute to sean stafford yeah oh. Because he was like Sean, we yeah, Sean, Sean yeah, big yeah. man. Like he is yeah. one of the nicest guys, oh, lovely man in the industry. Him, do you yeah. do you know Sean? Um, I think I don't know him, but I know of him. Like, I, yeah. does he do like F forty five? And is there a Sean Stafford gym in London? He's got a gym. He's City got Athletics, yeah. gym City and, Athletic. Okay, yeah, yeah, nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was like back then. That's where like WBFF and all that stuff was like really taking off. At least Sean's an OG. In yeah, the industry. for sure, like proper OG. Yeah, but. He's not just an OG because he's one of the first. He's an OG yeah. because he also has that network and yeah. that connection with people. Yeah. So he reached out to me on Instagram and was like, hey man, like you're doing some pretty sick stuff. Yeah. How much would it cost to, yeah. to have you just travel with me and yeah. do this and do wow, that? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, sick. Leaving my PT job yeah. ASAP, yeah. right? So he picked me up. We did some YouTube videos back in the day. Mm. Um, and then we also traveled to India, which was massive. Like it was one of my first big international trips. Was that with Optimum? Yeah, yeah. So, wait, go on. Matt, so I, Matt, no, Matt secretly like stalks you all. No, this, no, no, all cause, no, because like you forget, like <laughs> I was, I was on that shit as well. Like, I was trying to be like a fitness person on Instagram yeah. when I was eighteen. Yeah. yeah. So like, yeah. I followed Sean for years, and like yeah. Steve and all those kind of people. Um, and I remember watching his YouTube videos of him going to India with Owen. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that just goes to show, like, it's yeah. mad, isn't it, actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you were out there with him? Yeah, so I was so out there. So those videos I was probably watching were probably were yours. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And if, uh, you mentioned Steve, I'm assuming Steve Cook. Yeah, yeah. So so this is obviously, like, I've jumped a massive time gap here without explaining it. <laughs> this was, like, when I was, like, 21, right? Yeah. So I'd done PT for a few years. Um, Sean then gave me an introduction to Steve Cook. Yeah. And Steve was like, yeah, uh, I think he just hit a million at the time. Yeah. And he was chasing the two million. Yeah. could be wrong it yeah. could be he just was chasing the one okay. mil um he's like i'm doing daily vlogs i need an editor i need yeah. someone who gets fitness content yeah and sean was like well i got my guy you know cj let's let me give you his number yeah, yeah. have a chat with him and at that time i was the same as well i was like oh my god it's steve cook yeah, yeah, yeah i've got yeah. sean stafford and steve <laughs> cook technically under my belt as yeah, sus yeah, as that yeah. sounds that was like the one uh so i was editing daily vlogs for steve as well and was alec filming those yet Alec wasn't there at the time. The guy's name was Jason. Okay. Really, really cool guy. Yeah. Um, he uh, he would liaise with me because obviously the different time zones made it really yeah. convenient for daily vlogs. Yeah, yeah. He'd film all day, upload the footage to the Dropbox. I'd wake up at like four in the morning, yeah. edit it, have it done by like 12 my time, Yeah. send it to Steve. Did you wake up at four in the morning specifically for that or did you just happen to get up at 4 a.m.? No, day so or? it kind of accidentally came off the back of we came back from India with Sean. And I was horribly jet lagged, and so I think you were it, waking up early. Yeah, so you just kept yeah. It like that. Yeah. And yeah. then I think I was reading the Four AM Club at yeah. the time. Yeah, I was like, "Well, this is convenient." <laughs> yeah, I'm up at four, and then I realized, "Holy shit, I'm so productive." Yeah, at this time, yeah. everyone's asleep. Yeah, by the time it comes twelve o'clock, everyone's having their lunch. I'm done for the day. Yeah, I'll go to the gym, yeah, work chill. out, yeah. do a shoot, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like that. Those two under my belt really credited a lot of my success to today. Mm. And that's what helped um, as well when it came to Gymshark. Because at that point, Steve now was signed by Gymshark. Right, okay. It's before he was ON, right? Yeah. So as soon as he got signed, I was then editing his content when he filmed with Gymshark and everything and vice versa. And that's how you got your foot in the door with Gymshark? I would definitely say, yeah. Like, helped. it helped. Yeah, yeah, um, That's so funny. And then it was also like uh, Christian Guzman. I, entered. I was literally oh, I made, yeah. so that his, na his name popped up in my brain. yeah. yeah. Because obviously, like that world was, especially with Steve, him and Steve collabed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Me and my little brother were watching his YouTube videos, like obviously religiously, yeah, like the yeah. whole, the yeah. whole shabam. Yeah. And it's funny because we both ended up working with those people, like yeah, 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 in that world. Manifest, right? It's so strange. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Honestly, it's I, I was manifesting it every yeah, day. Like, yeah. got Sean Stafford, sick. I want to work with Steve Cook. Yeah. Got Steve, sick. Wanted to work with Christian. We never worked together. No, obviously How? he's he's all the way out there, and yeah. he's never come in here. So. But I entered his um videographer application oh, okay yeah back in the day yeah, yeah. and i had just done a shoot in marrakesh okay and it was for a fitness retreat yeah and so i was like oh this is perfect because chris needs someone who travels does travel videos yeah, yeah, but yeah. fitness content yeah, yeah so i made this reel out of that yeah and i remember he facetimed me really? one morning oh uh, it was so bad though like anyone that's listening do not fanboy when it comes <laughs> to like like working with big clients right 
yeah. don't like say you're interested you know when you go to a job interview yeah and you've got to do your research yeah, about yeah. the company but as soon as like christian called me up like it came up and i was like oh my fucking god it's christian guzman like yeah, yeah, yeah. i've made it i've made it like this is so sick the entire time he's on the phone he's smiling but deep down i know he's going i'm not hiring this guy yeah because yeah. i'm freaking out because you're that. freaking out yeah but he basically said like it's between you and um was it Nabil? It wasn't Nabil. It was the guy just before him. Oh, the singer. Yeah, yeah I can't remember. He sings much. now. Mm, you know, Mark, he begins with M? No. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. remember. His, I know who you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But his videographer before Nabil. Yeah, at that time, I knew I wasn't that guy okay, anyways because yeah. my, my experience was still like quite fresh in the yeah. industry. So uh, we never worked together, but we always stayed in touch. Okay, yeah. So every now and then we'll catch up and yeah, we'll yeah. talk. But there was like a really wholesome moment last year when we were in Venice Beach Golds for yeah. a Gymshark event. Okay. And in a circle, I had all of my like big clients. Really? Because I also work with uh, Matt Does Fitness yeah. for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So we were out there and it was Matt Does Fitness, Steve Cook, Christian Guzman, <laughs> all talking with me. That's nice. And, I, yeah. and it, wasn't, it wasn't so much like, oh yeah, like I'm the shit. It was more like, this is a combination of years of work it's full circle moment and we were standing in and the circle uh, yeah that well. made that cherish those yeah you remember those for the rest of your life and it was great because like matt was like yeah you know good to see you like you've been doing some great work steve walks in cj hey yeah. man good yeah, to yeah. see you like man it's been quite a, quite a ride yeah christian come, cj what the fuck like yeah, yeah you're doing yeah. amazing i see yeah. you working with the reds the aries and everything yeah, and i was yeah. like this is so sick. Like I'm just taking pictures in my head yeah the yeah, whole yeah. time i think yeah. i think that's what's so good about it though is because everyone even though you might not be aiming for the same stuff. You're all on like a journey. So you can all relate to each other on mm. like the fact that you're just aiming for something and mm. seeing progress with each other is kind of like, oh, respect to each of you kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. It's so cool. It's nice. But you know, the the whole point of it is last year's or this year's success, again, is attributed to the many times I failed in freelance before that because it wasn't a smooth ride getting to Gymshark. Yeah. Um, I applied for it twice. Yeah. Didn't get into it, right? Yeah. And then there was like so much trials and tribulations that came with that. Even once I got the Gymshark job, I remember I was in LA filming with my client, Rushi from Rush Athletics. He's yeah. a jump rope guy. Okay. Um, and I got the call from Gymshark. Hey, can you come to the office uh, like as soon as possible? I'm like, yeah, well, I'm in Venice Beach at the moment. Mm. I could probably get there on Monday as soon yeah. as I land. It's like, yeah, sick. Got the job. And then I was like, amazing. But the problem with that is once you go free uh, full time, of a company after you've spent like two years trying to build a network you've got to say goodbye to the network you do it goes and yeah. i've heard people say it's actually i spoke to someone a few days ago on a shoot mm. it's like yeah i'm gonna go traveling for a year and then mm. hopefully like when i come back like my mm. network will still be there mm -mm. Like, probably won't be because no. the minute you get asked to do a shoot and you can't do it someone else is going to take it if they got on with that person they'll just hire that person again yeah it's harsh yeah. like it's really really harsh well like it's obviously a blessing on what we do you've got to stay in it like yeah. almost 24 7 yeah um and i and that's exactly why i've had to start and stop you know three four times yeah to get to where i am today with having my own limited company yeah and being able to have clients on a regular yeah um because when i was at gymshark for four years i was very conscious that i lost clients like everyone yeah and i knew that eventually i would outgrow this position yeah i need clients okay. so the most important thing for me and i know you guys touched on this on uh, previous episodes just be the nice guy right yeah oh, so everyone you meet yeah. everyone you interact with they're not your client today no but in two years time they'll they give you a be. call yeah because they've got a project that you know they've got a budget of like three four k whatever it is they go no nah, there's this one guy at gymshark he's really good he's a really nice guy as well yeah he's helped me out whilst i was there let me give him a call and a lot of that success came from that as well yeah. just being the nice guy yeah. and to a degree going above and beyond but it's really tough for us as creatives to go above and beyond because nine out of ten times that means like not getting paid not yeah working doing it for cheaper and then it's it's going against self-worth and like yeah. but you just you just said that you after four years of being with gymshark you felt like you started to outgrow that position so can yeah. you touch a little more on that so like how much did you learn during your period at Gymshark? Mm. Mm. And then like how how come you decided to say like goodbye to that role and then like take a step back into the freelance world? So a lot of my knowledge and understanding comes from not so much the company itself, but the people that work there. Okay, yeah. So the people that were in my team yeah. that I was working with on a daily basis. Yeah. 
they helped massively. I would have chats with the producers yeah. and just be like, like, what's your process with producing something? Yeah. Where do you start? You know, where do you go for contacts? Where do you go for this, this yeah. and that? And then I'd have chats with the graphics team. What's your process with making an eye-catching, you know, billboard or thumbnail, whatever? Uh, editing team. I wasn't the strongest editor. I edited Final Cut Pro. I know Cameron, you did it for a long time as well. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of like an unwritten rule at Gymshark, do not use Final Cut Pro. Oh, really? Yeah, it's Pre like Premiere Pro. Pro. Yeah, yeah Premiere yeah, Pro. That's one of the reasons I left Final Cut, because as soon as I came to London, I realized that if you was ever working with anybody else, it was always just, oh, you work on Premiere? Yeah. And you was always the one that was singled yeah. out because you didn't? When I came in, I was also filming and editing, which is something I shouldn't have done, because that was just my role as a videographer. Um, but I loved filming all the projects, all the themes and everything. And I was like, I want to edit this. Yeah. But the problem would rise where, because I edit on Final Cut Pro, if I go away on holiday for two weeks and that project's not finished, I've got to pass it on to someone who doesn't know how to use Final Cut Pro. Yeah. Um, so I eventually made the transition there. So I'd have chats with Aiden. Aiden taught me so much. Mm -hmm. uh, my colleague also, Jack Watkins, he, he showed me a lot as well. Yeah. So... I would always talk to different people in the team. You're being to gain around that talented experience. people. And yeah. when you're around talented people that specialize in different things, yeah. it allows you to learn so much from different scopes. Which exactly. Is great. Like and a lot of people, you know, they'll they'll try and stay in their bubble when they're doing their own thing. Mm. But when you work with a talented team like that, it's so important that you just gather all that information from them. Because one day it will come back. Yeah. And you know, a client will ask you, How do you do this Luma fade? How do you do this transition? Or can you fix this audio? Well, I know how to do that because of that person showed me, right? Yeah. So after about four years, you know, worked through lockdown, that was like a really hard time for us as creatives. Um, we couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. Right. And we you could... were used to going places. Yeah. Like yeah, with yeah. Gymshark, you were, you're like you say, you were in LA a lot, in New yeah. York, Australia, like you were really traveling. Yeah. I and having big setups, like proper, all the camera kit, Aries, like the lot, like it was big production stuff. Yeah, exactly. So I spent maybe on average, seven days in a month in birmingham yeah. in in the country wow. in the country yeah everything else was on the road yeah, yeah. and i kind of like call that like my golden years uh, at gymshark because yeah. i was meeting all these athletes i was meeting all these people around the world yeah the network was just growing and yeah. growing and growing uh but at that time i was like i don't have this you know this uh hindsight that this is going to help me yeah i was just enjoying the You're moment just enjoying it um and i feel like that's obviously something that we kind of forget to do yeah quite a lot so I was like, yeah, sick. Like, I'm in Sydney. Oh, the beach, everything. Bondi, oh, it's amazing. I'm in LA, Venice Beach, sick. Gold's yeah. gym, yeah. perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um, New York, Times Square, hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then COVID happened. Couldn't film anything, couldn't travel. And it got to a point where it was like, everything was being filmed on a phone. Because that's what anyone could do at that yeah. time, right? Mm. TikTok went viral, as, you know, people think it's always been like this massive thing where it garners like billions and billions of views a day mm. whereas because of lockdown that's where it really shines through right yeah and a lot of the briefs for the campaigns that we were doing were just ugc so user generated content we don't need videographers we don't need cj we don't need editors yeah we're just gonna brief the athlete to make everything in tiktok and we'll just repost it in their kitchen yeah how how was that as a pill to swallow from traveling the world mm. being on peak productions mm. to literally i imagine like within the space of a week or overnight and when covid hit yeah to not being forgotten about but like not having a those skills required anymore and b not even being able to leave your house and travel when you've been doing that for the last two years like you've become accustomed to that lifestyle mm. so it's a massive lifestyle change for you oh it was huge and looking back at it now like my ego was definitely there yeah i went from being the guy yeah you know like okay we've got a shoot in la who can we send cj he'll step up he'll do yeah. it right stupid hours like i'd travel land film all day stop continue the next day keep going land back in the hq mm. i go back to the hq with my suitcase start yeah. editing yeah i went like above and beyond right yeah yeah and then it was like oh we don't need you anymore or at least we don't need you right now yeah you can just edit youtube videos just download people's content our athletes content yeah. repurpose it compilations that's what's really popular right now and i remember just editing it in my room i'm like i'm not for this yeah i'm not the strongest editor 
Yeah. Um, I don't enjoy it as yeah. much as a lot of people do. Yeah. And I'm being told that I can't film with my cameras, my reds, my Aries, because it's too good. Yeah. It's too good quality. It doesn't look amateur. It doesn't look... Like it was taken on a phone. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't feel real. It looks yeah, like yeah. an art. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah. commercial. It looks like mm. commercial. Yeah. And Which that, is so fair, by the way. So, so fair. Like 100%. Yeah. Like, you know, if you get an ad nowadays whilst you're scrolling on social media and you see it's kind of filmed like an influencer. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, it feels a bit more legit. Well, I've noticed that sometimes you're on TikTok and you scroll and you're watching something and you don't realize it's an ad yeah. until you see, like, it says sponsored at the bottom left and you, like, skip. But yeah, yeah. before you, it still keeps you longer because you think, oh, it's just another TikTok video. Yeah. I'll exactly. watch it. One of my favorite people to watch at the moment, I don't watch a lot because it annoys me. Ads in general yeah. annoy me. Um, Paula Lima. Well, that name rings a bell. I re- yeah, I was just about to say I recognize that. Yeah, if any of you guys want to look into his ads, he's been like picked up by like Sky. Um, he's traveling at the moment in like uh, Brazil right. because his videos are the ones where, you know, there's like really cringy like TikToks that come across. It's like guys staring, like winking at you. Right, yeah. Just cringy stuff, okay, yeah. right? He repurposes them. So his video starts with the cringy stuff and then he does a reenactment of it. Uh, okay, so he takes right. the piss. He takes the piss out of them, right? Yeah. 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 And yeah. now companies are paying him to do that because when he films it even though he's filming it on a on a camera and his videographer ewan does a really good job of it right yeah they make it look so amateur still that it just gets viral content and is that the way it's time. cut up and the way it's edited that makes it look like that or yeah and yeah. it's also like his personality as well right, okay but yeah. that was something that i wasn't able to understand yeah during that tough transition yeah um and then eventually we got out of covid and the shoot started to come back but not there so was still Gymshark at this point. Still Gymshark. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the budget for the video team wasn't there. Yeah. The demand for video assets weren't there. Yeah. And I just felt like I went from a position where I was right for this job to I feel overqualified. Yeah. Because I'm not filming with a phone. Yeah. That's how I processed it at the time. Yeah. And that was really tough for me yeah. to understand that. So I was like, right, let me start putting in the motion to go back and into freelance was that like a decision where you was like i'm gonna decide i'm gonna go back to freelance or did you feel like it was eventually coming whether you was gonna go yourself or whether the team was just gonna change or you know yeah so as as a team everyone was like i'm not enjoying this anymore we went from editing world-class documentaries and projects and campaigns it's very story led with purpose yeah Yeah, very story led to now being very much social media led and data led yeah so you could have one of the most, you know, heart wrenching stories from an athlete, from an influencer, from someone in the community, but we'd probably slide it over because we know it's not going to do well on TikTok. We know it's not going to do well on Instagram. Yeah. Um, so we had to very much pick and choose very, very carefully which projects we were on. Mm. Um, yeah. And then I'm, I remember doing a shoot, uh, BBC Glow Up came onto the, um, came to the gym. And they said, we'd love to do like a gym shoot related um, episode. Yeah. So I spent like days with my colleague, uh, Neil, at the time. We were just setting everything up, lighting, rigging, gripping, everything. And it came to our shoot time, shoot window in the evening, shoot day. And I remember my colleagues coming in right in front of my camera and just on their phone filming it. Yeah, got the shot. We're done. And I'm just standing there with the red and i'm like put it all rigged up ready to go yeah 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 (laughs) what do you mean we're done he's like oh do you want to just go in and film for the sake of filming oh what no way and that's when i realized i've I've got too much to give that i'm hindering myself by staying here yeah Mm. but that's that's not anything to do you know it's not anyone's fault it's not how that was just the type of content they needed at the time yeah so like which is completely fair yeah, and yeah. i get it and it does well mm. so but like from where i'm sat you wanted to create more of those story-led mm. things like the documentaries the su- there's things with substance and especially when you're used to working with aries and reds and like all of this kit that you love it seems like you know you talk about your armory and like mm. the cameras and every all the setups mm. so going from that to just being like taking something on a phone like I get it for like someone that's a camera nerd and someone mm. that loves the tech and mm. loves the lighting and loves the production side of it. 
Like, that's so hard to take. Yeah. And like, so I can completely get why you're like, okay, this isn't for me anymore. Like, mm-hmm. You know? Well, well, we we did speak about that a few episodes ago where you kind of off to pick and choose what platforms you're posting on because like all the content is just as important as each other but like a story driven piece of content isn't as good on something like social media and tiktok compared to if you put it on youtube or vimeo or wherever and especially as a creative it can be really difficult where filming on a phone is kind of like it's just something you're not interested in because it's like it's it's not easy but it's like it is in Mm. a way Mm. but you can still create beautiful stories yeah. with your phone yeah yeah but, but, it re- but it requires different skills or a different purpose yeah and it's like i'm not into cameras and filming yeah just for it to be shot with something i can pull out my pocket and mm. you know a bit more casual yeah. in a way yeah. but here's the yeah. thing right after i'd left and i was pursuing freelance again i had very very quickly realized everything that i'd learned during that tough time i, I was storing in the back of my brain even though i was pissed off yeah i was like Damn, like, I'm not on this shoot again. What was the whole point? Blah yeah. blah blah. What I'd learned from that was the the ability to adapt to a situation, and that's what companies had to do during COVID, right? Yeah. When it came to me dealing with clients, their needs, their requirements, I was able to understand much more sympathetically how to be social led, how to come up with content yeah. that would actually get click through rates, yeah, engagement yeah. numbers through the roof, and the an- analytics to match. Yeah. So that's where I really excelled with working with clients who were also influencers in the fitness industry, but wanted to grow their YouTube, wanted yeah. to grow their Instagram and TikTok. And I was like, oh yeah, like we can do this. We know that this trend at the moment is going really well. Yeah. This is the analytics. This is how we chase them. We can see your click-through rate here was really good. We can see your watch time was terrible here. Let's avoid that. Yeah. And as I'm saying all these things, I'm like, that's clearly a byproduct of me being pissed off during yeah. my time in COVID and Gymshark, right? It's like, actually, no, I still learn a lot yeah. and how to um, channel that into my business today. So whenever people say like, what do you do for a living? I don't really say videographer anymore or cinematographer. I say I'm a problem solver because people come to you with projects and they yeah. go, we've got this idea for uh, a shoot, a campaign. We just don't know how to storyboard it. We don't know how to go around it and produce it. And I go, don't you worry. Like, I know exactly what we can do for that. And when I changed my mindset to I'm a problem solver instead of a videographer, yeah, I, I was able to service everything so much more um, efficiently yeah, and more sympathetically. That's interesting. Well, you, you're solving the specific needs of the client, right? Compared to yeah. them just coming up to you and being like, we need like this video. This is how we want it filmed. It's mm. more like, well... It's a broader approach, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. you always get clients coming in and going... I've got this idea. I don't know a location. I don't know the 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 how to the kit mm. that we need. Yeah. I just pick it apart. Okay. I go, what's the project? What's yeah. the theme? What are you trying to achieve out of this? Yeah. And then I go, okay, cool. Marble arch would be a really good area to do this in yeah. because of, it fits the aesthetics and the tone. Yeah. What you wanna wanna okay. achieve, right? Yeah. And then obviously, you know, we are the professionals still. We have the knowledge, the know how yeah. to frame, to light, to to edit we're all thinking about this stuff. So that's how I look at my projects with clients. And that's how I like, like to build my team around productions as well. Yeah. I go, I've got a really good editor who specializes in YouTube content, who specializes in engaging uh, graphics, animations that can get your TikTok reels or get your Instagram reels with high click-through rates. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So before we move on past Gymshark, <clears throat> I want to ask you one question about it. So what was your favorite shoot that you did with them as a production do you have like one that stands out for you whether it was like the cameras and the setup you were using the location like the people you shoot in yeah the yeah. people like is there anything that really stands out as like yes this is like this was like the pinnacle if that makes sense yeah no like there's there's so many I can imagine. to go off yeah um you know you have to remember gym shark had like an array of athletes yeah. and it, and back in the day like 2018 2020 it was definitely more athlete based then came social media and the rise of influencers content creators um and the the experiences just broadened right um i would probably say one of my favorites is i did a shoot with a guy called sal nelson french um yeah, content who. creator he does yeah. the music videos does he do music videos is, it the, is Sam Nelson the music video guy? No, Sam. Oh, Sal. Oh, Sal. Oh, S-A-O. sorry, I said Sam. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know who you mean, though. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so he, like, 
he was sick he didn't speak a word of english yeah but like we we did a shoot in this like really like grimy gym in birmingham and i was like i'm gonna make this look fucking insane like this this, this grime this texture on the yeah. walls everything like it's really grimy gr- uh gloomy setting mm. i'm gonna make this one of the hardest like edits ever and i remember at the time we had permission from an artist called uh splurge boys right and they came out with this sick track uh hot from the intro and i was listening on on it like repeat i don't know if you do this cameron but when you find a song that you really like yeah, yeah. and you you can say this would be really good for this project yeah. you start listening to the song and you're like yeah yeah pan and track here oh it'd be good if like the camera dollies here and you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. or the edit it'll be really good if i like cover the bag over the camera and it's a transition to the yeah. next location yeah. and then by the end of the edit you hate the song because you've heard it so <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> and then you're like yeah i don't want to listen to this ever but you, you know you also post it like probably same with your pictures as well like you just keep yeah. looking at it right yeah. and you're like yeah this is sick. Yeah, yeah, sick, yeah. sick 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 there's always something just so nice about when you upload it it's like finished yeah it's like oh well, it's, uh, it's the the feeling of other people enjoying it as well. Mm. It's like if someone else sees your image or your video and they feel something from it. Because like you work so hard on this product and then you put it out into the world. And obviously you want nothing more than people to love it. But obviously then there's a fine line between becoming so obsessed over what people think mm. about it that mm. it's detrimental. But like, you know, as an artist, you want to create something and share it with the world mm. and get it out there and see if like, other people like it and like how they respond to it. Yeah, I think any of the content that I created from Gymshark in my first year, they were getting like millions of views yeah. on Instagram. Mm. There was obviously a paid ad behind it that yeah. helped bump it. Yeah. But the comments, you know, that, that gratification that I got from that was like, this edit is, is insane. Like people aren't commenting about Gymshark. They're not commenting about what he's wearing. Yeah. They're like, who's this camera guy? Who's this editor? Give him a raise. Give. And I was just like, yeah, sick. Like, because that was a project. That I was thinking about and planning for ages. It fills it fills you with confidence. Yeah, I can relate because I, I took a photo of Elliot, and it got posted on the Gymshark main page. Right, right. And I remember it getting like thirty five, forty thousand likes, yeah, and yeah. being like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. Like, and then people comment and saying, "Sick photo, sick photo," mm. and it's just like, obviously, it feels good. It's mm. like, okay, like my work is up to standard and mm. is up to like the caliber, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I had a a really big turning moment though. I think in my second year. We did um, lift Amsterdam. Yeah. So for Gymshark, you would, you you'd lift the city. Where yeah. basically we would travel to a city where it has like a really big fitness growing scene or just a really big Gymshark following, and we'd bring all the athletes. You know, give the opportunity for these people to meet their friends. Yeah. Kind of like um, uh, like FIBA and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah like an ex- any expos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it would always be free like for the fans. Fitness Comic Con. Yeah, yeah. Is it, oh, yeah. Oh, I remember that one episode when you were talking about how much you love uh, Marvel. Yeah, comic like, books. We, we yeah. got to talk. We got to talk. Um, so we did this one event and that was like when I really enjoyed it because a lot of people from the community would start to come up to me and be like, you're the video guy, right? For Gymshark. Like, yeah. I'm holding a camera. Like, yeah, yeah. boom mic in my left hand. Like, yeah, yeah man, no, that's yeah. me. Uh, but like, no, no, no. But like, you're CJ, right? Like, I follow you. You yeah. do some sick work for Gymshark. I'm like, oh, man, this is this is too much like but that's class though and yeah. like it's so good because like obviously with a company as big as Gymshark and the amount of people that follow them and then you get the diehard people that like religiously follow those athletes and if you're shooting content for Gymshark or the athletes mm. and they are also like want to be creatives there's so many of them that are like they've picked up a camera to because they want to be fitness influencers and they've fallen in love with taking photos or t- doing videos and they love the creative side of it. Mm. So when they see you and they're like, oh my God, like we followed you, like really love your videos or like whatever, then like there's no, no better feeling for you. And then it's like, you're you're giving back to the community then still. You're not a fitness influencer, but yet there's people that are coming up to you at these events and they're like, and they're asking you questions about cameras and mm. like, how could I get into this? Or how could I do that? And then you're like giving back and you're educating, which is like the best. Yeah, so at Lift Amsterdam, like that happened a lot. Yeah. Um, and you have to remember, uh in amsterdam you would get people from germany switzerland austria yeah. coming um and they would always say like dutch people really friendly can talk to you german people we're the most awkward people ever like we won't come up to you we won't you know what i mean like yeah, very yeah. awkward energy yeah but i had a lot of people from germany coming up to me and okay. being like can you t- can you tell me how to do this can you teach yeah. me this and i'm like yes yeah, like, i'm completely neglecting my job like i've got <laughs> an earpiece cj yeah. like one of the athletes is like meaningful story and i'm yeah. like yeah, anyway, so about Premiere Pro. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then at that event, uh, what changed for me was one of the fans came up 
and she just started crying in front of me and i was like what is going on like, i'm not prepared for this yeah and he was like i just wanted to say like thank you so much um for being here i didn't understand it i was like what have i done for this person yeah she's crying in front of me she was like oh i saw one of your videos that you filmed with one of the athletes she was explaining how her mum passed away uh, oh no had to deal with breast cancer right i'm currently going through that and i right. just want to say your video you filming that yeah. being able to produce that and bring yeah. it to us really helped me feel heard really helped me feel seen yeah when i needed it the most oh wow and yeah. she you know she cuddled me and like she's crying i'm crying yeah the athletes are crying right next to me like the crowd is crying because they're all waiting to speak to the athletes the person she's in it. your ears crying yeah, 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 yeah. but that's surely that's like that's why we do what we do do you know what I mean like yeah. it's those moments where it's like oh like me creating something yeah. that's like so much bigger than me or like whatever and you've given back mm. and it just shows like how your work can impact someone yeah and that's why like doing those projects for like mental health or like whatever is are so important exactly. so important so that was my turning point to go from I don't want to make engaging videos anymore yeah. I want to make stories that that for this person to relate to yeah. and feel welcomed and not alone that's what really changed my mind to to being more story led yeah. and just doing like loads of things like that can contribute to someone's life. Yeah. So even nowadays today, like I've done a lot of charity work and I film with a lot of charities. Yeah. And they bring like so much good awareness to good stuff. Uh, I've recently signed on with this client who uh, she was a victim of fraud from like her her brother. Yeah. Right. And she was only like 14, 15 at the time. Right. She's like, I want to do a campaign yeah. to bring awareness to that. So we're going to be like having interviews with the Met Police, Spotify, oh, Spotify going to get behind it, yeah. um, Snapchat going to get behind it as well. Um, and it's, it's stuff like that where it's like, I don't really care what your budget is. I want to be able to service that. It's doing good. It's yeah. doing good for the world, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's obviously a time and place for charging what you're worth and yeah, getting yeah, what yeah, you're yeah. worth. But whenever a project like that comes along where you can make an actual impact on yeah. people's lives, yeah. just do it. Like, yeah literally just it'll be not just good for your network yeah but i think the satisfaction that you would get as a creative from doing that as well yeah for me anyways that's like that's just the yeah. top the creme of the creme you know what i mean like yeah. but what's your favorite shoot <laughs> <laughs> oh i said that it was like sal nelson oh that yeah bit. but you, you got into you were like you were you're were telling the story oh. so you wanted to make it like really gritty in the edit and then you talked about the song and then we went off tangent yeah yeah, yeah. So, so like the, what were you filming on like what did you have lighting set up like oh no it was nothing like was it was, it was just a7s2 really S2. had a sigma 35 prime yeah and oh is that the art lens yeah yeah, oh, yeah. and i was just like everything in this gym just looks amazing right now is that because of the light was it like natural light from the yeah roof? so i think i know it, which gym you're on about you know yeah it, it was really out there proper grimy but it had these um was it muscle works i don't know if it was muscle work no. i can't remember though Kings. It was quite small. Right. No, not Kings. Okay. Um, but yeah, it had these um skylights that yeah. were obviously like very dirty, but they gave like a really nice diffusion. Yeah. Almost like a black promise. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like this looks insane. Yeah. And like there's no lighting, he's got his hoodie up. It's yeah. all just in the mood. And like you have to listen to the song hot from the intro from Splurge Boys to understand the vibe right. of this yeah. video. We'll yeah. link it in the show notes. Yeah, 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 yeah genuinely. Um because once that video came out as well it resonated with so many people. Right. They're like, yeah, I want my Gymshark legacy hoodie on. I want to just have my hood on, music yeah, in, yeah, yeah. and just lift heavy shit. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, even to this day, would send that video to me and be like, one of my like motivational videos still yeah. to this day. Yeah. And even I'll repost it like once a year yeah, just to yeah, give it just due, to, uh, yeah. due justice. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was definitely one of my favorite shoots. So is that something you still look back on now of that specific project and be like, that's still a good video? all this time later because it can be quite easy to look back and be like man yeah. why did i transition like that yeah no, and, so, the, the, yeah <laughs> nah like i will watch it back and i go you know what I, at that time gymshark was looking for like the look and feel for the workout videos hmm. and i accidentally created that <laughs> i became like a walking meme in a way because whenever i would film i'd obviously follow the athlete's movements yeah so, you know, like with my boom mic, I'll be like going up and down, left, right. You know, if he's like doing a bicep curl, my camera's down oh, here, yeah. comes up, yeah, down. Yeah. And they're like, everything was handheld. And I used to get stick for it across the community, across the yeah. office. 
my colleagues, whenever we're in the office, I'm sitting down editing, uh, George Hickton, he'd do it all the time, right? <laughs> he'd get his like phone out and he'd be like, hey, CJ, I'm CJ. <laughs> like following the movement and everything. Um, so I had like accidentally created a trend of how to film fitness videos. Mate. So really? Like, wait, wait, so, so no, no, like no, original... no, I, no, I've done that. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, it was in like when, when I used to film some stuff for Elliot. Like I'd be in the gym, like following the yeah, like the like the the arm movement or yeah. like going yeah. with it, and it does look sick. And mm. they definitely came from those gym shot videos. Yeah, so I can't really say that I created <laughs> the whole thing, no, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess right time, right place. Yeah, yeah. And I just was known for doing that. Yeah. So, like you said, like people from the community, they were filming their own fitness stuff. Yeah. And they'd always like say, "Oh yeah, I I just do what you do. Yeah. I follow the movement. Yeah. I do that transition idea when you walk across a pillar." to yeah. then the next location yeah. and i'm like yeah sick yeah sick. i did that yeah it was nice that's what your legacy is like, <laughs> like yeah. transitions and movements <laughs> yeah just movements yeah like, yeah like that everywhere yeah i'm really curious about you said that you was freelance first and then you went into gymshark and you became freelance again mm. and usually people have the full-time job first and then they eventually become freelance whereas you started freelance and i always talk about well to you and just friends in general how when you freelance you just become so much more self-aware like your personality like you, you're very well aware of how your actions impact your life whereas people who are employed they kind of still get paid at the end of the month and they don't have to they still improve themselves but they just don't need to as much and i'm just wondering you'll have a different perspective going from freelance into a job and then coming back to freelance again and how that i guess I feel what, like any hurdles i guess i feel like it's mean? different though because you were so young mm -hmm. when you did yeah. it the first time around so like, i feel like you weren't like an adult adult then the, you it's, had such a weird yeah because not only did you do freelance but you was also in the influencer rise yeah era of like where social media was kicking off yeah it's a strange one yeah, yeah that is definitely again right place right time yeah. without even knowing yeah, at the yeah. time that i was yeah. in the right place right time um like i said before i failed freelance yeah. you know and for anyone that's listening now if you fail the first time your life's not over yeah you, we've all been there we've yeah. all had like really successful three months four months of productions shit got nothing yeah. for like four months you know what i mean yeah. and you feel we, like oh, we i'm done too well. yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i'm done like i'm gonna get my job back at holland and barrett or whatever right like i'm just gonna give this up but the re yeah you guys said it, like i was really young yeah. i was very lucky to have my dad who's like a really successful business mentor and coach right he was able to tell me and teach me so much about how yeah. to do this, how to do that. Yeah. What he wasn't able to teach me. So he taught me like the mannerisms, the the know-how. Yeah. He wasn't able to give me the experience of talking with clients. Yeah. Money talks, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um and and yeah, he wasn't he didn't understand how the camera world worked. Yeah. So I had to still learn that. I still learn outside of it. So the reason for Gymshark as well, not only because I was a fan of the brand and I wanted to help the community, I needed that knowledge. And I didn't have qualifications to my name. I didn't have a certificate degree. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't able to go uni and, you know, have all this uh, expensive equipment for me provided, right? Mm. I didn't have the money either to pay for a lot of stuff. So I was like, I need to... Gymshark, in a way, was a way for me to go to university and get that people skills, get that yeah. industry knowledge. Oh, and, you, and, yeah. use the, the and use the kit. And yeah, yeah. It was, I want to touch on two things quickly. You know how you were saying how you go like four months without any money, three mm. months like with, mm. I was speaking to a friend recently who's a really successful director, director stuff for like Nike and shit. Nice. They were saying to me that like they had such a quiet year, there was one point where they applied for universal credit. No way. And that just yeah. goes to show yeah. how up and down it can be, mm. even for someone that's really successful. Mm. And then back to your other point about doing university, I've got a friend at the moment, you know, Jamie. I'm sure he won't mind me saying this. Very talented photographer, shoots for GQ. He's only 20 years old. He's at uni in London at the moment. And I was like, he's got access to these cameras and these studios. And I'm like, mate, like if you're listening to this and you're at uni at the moment, you've got access to this kit. You don't know how lucky you are. Yeah. Use it. Like get in the studio, use it, learn it, learn the lighting. Because when you leave uni, you aren't going to have a studio. Like, trust me, like I'd love nothing more to have my own studio. But like, I also don't have like four grand to spend a month on rent for my own like studio and yeah. kit and like all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like that, while you've got access to that stuff, use it, use it, use it and use it like mad and learn with it because eventually you won't have it. No, we were very, very lucky at Gymshark. Yeah. And again, a lot of my knowledge today with equipment 
is because of two colleagues in particular, uh, my manager at the time, Tom Williams. Yeah. And the, it was really weird. Like he was in a producer role. You know who I'm about to say. He was in a producer role. But then he had this amazing knowledge and fascination with being a grip and lighting or just being a gaffer in general. Just lighting knowledge and filming as well. Neil Phipps. Neil's lovely. Yeah, yeah. Great guys. And they're obviously both also left Gymshark startup their own media company. Yeah. Um, those two taught me everything. Yeah. So we had just similar to you guys in the setup, all this kit, they would teach me. Like they take time of their day, like to spend a day with me. Yeah. This is how you use this camera. This is the in and outs of the red. You know, this is the in and outs of the uh Alexas and Aries and stuff like that. Um and if it wasn't for them and my time at Gymshark, I wouldn't be able to understand how to produce shoots uh, today. What was your favorite camera setup then? <laughs> I re I had my phase with a Gemini 5K, right? The red. Okay. And um, it was stupid though. Like I'd treat it as if it's like a vlog setup, right? And I know cameras <laughs> like, like, you want, you want For those yeah, that yeah. don't know what like a red Gemini 5K is, can we, can boys, can we just throw some prices around? Cameron. So, so they know Do how it. much Oh, well, I don't know the Gemini. Well, I don't know how much the Gemini is, but. The thing with cinema cameras, you buy the body and then you got to buy everything else to build it and actually yeah. use it, right? Yeah, yeah. So like the handle will be so like what's 2K. this? what's this like probably like a 20, 30 grand setup? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but once yeah, you we, add we've stuff. With all the stuff to it, yeah. With yeah. add stuff and, added, yeah. And also just because of the nature of like a cinema camera, you buy it and inevitably it needs like the screen separately and oh, it needs a V-mount battery and oh, you need like a microphone that plugs into it instead of just being able to put like some on top of it. And, yeah. And These the cameras the are media, worth silly amounts. The media yeah, cards yeah. are just so expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, just like the Sony, the FX6 cards. It's like 400 quid for like Stupid. 200 gig. Yeah, they're taxing. <laughs> you're, like, you're just going to blast through that within like an hour. Yeah, yeah. they're taxing. Yeah. Um, Crazy. But yeah, I kind of, I got comfortable with just the uh, the 7S3 and just sticking that Sigma 35. I just said. 7S3 or 7S2? A7S3. 7S3. That's the, so the A7. most recent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. okay, right, it just right, came right, out obviously during COVID. What about FX3? Did you use... It's basically, everyone, everyone same, likes it's basically the same camera. I know, everyone so. likes the FX3. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We we occasionally use the FS5 and the FS7 as well. We do a lot of that stuff for um, our in-app production. Right. Okay. So obviously we needed like sustained periods of filming. Yeah. That's where the FS would come into play. Um, but I really loved the, um, the A7S3. And obviously you could build it into like a mini cinema rig with all the attachments, like small rigs. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was just really nice because it was like, I'm gonna throw a map box on it. I'm gonna look like I'm the shit, right? Yeah. When I go to these shoots, and it's, it's not too meme. big either. Like, no, it's, not, it's still it's really still, light. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen that meme where it's like you want to make it look like you're expensive? Yeah. Put a map box. On yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just like the client will be happy. The one thing that really annoyed me though is like people have a map box, but they wouldn't put any ND filters. Yeah. In. It's, it's like the nothing. Remind me of the map box. That's the thing that goes on the front. It's you not, can it's, drop it's, the, it's that, it's that. Yeah. You drop the filters in the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those filters are hella expensive. Yeah, they're like can be grand almost depending on what glass you go for. Yeah. But yeah, people would have it and they'd open it. You'd have a map box on an on an A7S3. Yeah. How does that work? Yeah, well, yeah, like there's different. <laughs> it, it depends, but like you know, you I didn't would, know that existed because if, if you don't have any filters in it, it still blocks yeah. like some flares and stuff. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's negligible. Like you know, it's yeah, not yeah. unless you film yeah. in like direct sunlight. Yeah, then it's okay. you usually just yeah. have it with filters. But I will stuff. say the perception that a client has when he sees you rocking up with this naked A7S3 yeah. with just a camera and lens and a mic. Yeah for a sit down podcast like us, right? Yeah. Versus rocking up with that, with all the cinema rig, the map box, the external monitors, yeah. the zoom HNs, whatever, right? Yeah. All of a sudden their perception of your worth and the value yeah. goes through the roof. They feel like they're getting their money's 100%. worth, right? So again, if I didn't have that knowledge from yeah. Gymshark and, and, and the tools that we were able to use on a daily basis, I probably wouldn't be able to be where I am today. It definitely wouldn't be yeah. where I am today and, and how much my company is able to make because of that know-how as well what i want to ask you now then is like what are your biggest i suppose takeaway tips and pieces of advice for the people that are now listening that want to make that dive into the freelance world mm. like i was saying i'm literally meeting my mate tom after this mm. who is full-time at a coffee shop at the moment wants to become a full-time freelance photographer so like he wants to pick my brain about it but you've literally just done it and you've been doing it for a year now freelance so yeah, it's kind of a weird one saying freelance because I'm the director of my company. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I guess and, working for yourself. But like, work, but you're being your own yourself. boss. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. being your own boss um, is almost the same as freelance. So, so I would say most importantly, like you guys say in past episodes, be the nice guy. Just show up. 
Yeah. Right. Um, the client that will always use you over and over and over again is because they can trust you. They know you deliver. They will probably remember. I actually remember one of my clients. Um, one of the talents fainted on set whilst we were filming, right. and it was like everyone was panicking, didn't know what to do. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, don't worry. Like, I know what to do. First aid. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Call this. You know, call the ambulance. Yada yada yada. And they actually ended up paying me two day rates after that. And they were like, we want to pay that because without you, we would have been like disaster. Yeah. Right. Um, and then now, even to this day, they still use me yeah. because of that trust that I built with them yeah. and that respect that we uh, gained for each other. Yeah. So definitely be the nice person. Every person you meet is a potential client in one way so or true. another. And that's not just at work. No. That's, that's like any time of the day yeah, yeah any day like anywhere but. so i remember even when i was recently filming matt does fitness yeah. we went to a restaurant we weren't even filming we were just having food yeah and the chef there i just sent like the food was amazing i said my compliments to the chef like that was one of the best sandwiches i've ever had yeah the chef came out and said i just want to say thank you like yeah. that's really nice of you um but then he also noticed i had a camera bag yeah and he's like oh i know that bag yeah do you do this and i'm like yeah and he's like oh yeah like i actually have an affinity with it I would love to to talk to you because I have a project coming up. Um, you're a nice guy. Can you can you help me with this? Yeah, yeah. And it's like he hasn't seen my portfolio. No, yeah. He doesn't even check my 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 social media. Yeah. Doesn't know what I can do, but he's already there because I'm being a nice guy. So definitely be mindful of who you're talking to, who you're experiencing your moments with. Yeah. Because I've had clients that I met four years ago. Yeah. And then just this month they'll pay me eight grand to do this production for them and that's because they remember the time that i gave them four years ago yeah you know so um, true. yeah again about what i love about people who work for themselves and freelancers you tend to be a lot more tuned into i don't know just aware of like how your actions in, impact the world in a way which is so yeah. interesting yeah. and it works exactly like as you just said there i'd also say um know your strengths and weaknesses you know hone your strengths but work on your weaknesses just as much. Yeah. Um, I was always a terrible editor. I would get by with yeah. very, very raw editing, but once it became like social media led and stuff like that, it was either evolve or die, right? Either I learn how to do this stuff or I get left back. Yeah. But where I also recognize that I'm weak at, I'm happy to pay someone who's really good at it yeah. to do it. Yeah. Um, if the budget's there, if you the can budget's create there. such a good team to like, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, everything that I'd learned at Gymshark. So, you know, people skills, understanding um, the the market. Yeah. So, social media in general, understanding how it works, understanding kit. If you can find someone that you can reach out to and say, "Hey, can I just shadow you for once a week?" Yeah. You know, my cousin Ishmael, he um, shadows like a really, really um, successful photographer and he gets pennies for it yeah right so he's lucky he's getting paid yeah. a lot of people don't get paid to do yeah. it right um but he literally just takes that opportunity to understand how flash photography works to yeah. understand how composition and lens and how photo is so different from video yeah, right yeah. um so definitely do that as well yeah learn just learn yeah um because i think i can't remember who said it, one of you guys said it, if you just don't learn then you'll get left behind yeah, yeah. simple as that right yeah, it's evolve or die and if you take all of that into account, your your network will eventually grow as a result. How, because I know there'll be definitely people listening being like, okay, that's all well and good, but how do I find those new clients? So like, I'm stepping into the world of freelance. No one knows me. How do I make myself known? Because I've, I'm just trying to put myself in the shoes of the people listening. They're like, oh, well, you worked at Gymshark for four years, five years, like you create a network. What if I don't have a network? Do you have like a piece of advice for that? Yeah, so you you can definitely do the um the hardcore Gary V approach <laughs> with just like fucking email hundred people yeah, yeah. every day, right? Yeah, Send them a DM. Yeah. This is what I do. I yeah. love your content. I'd love a to do a shoot game. for you. Yeah. 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 And I definitely did that in the beginning. Yeah. But I would I would say just put yourself out there. If there are events going on, if there's uh like athlete meetups are usually a really good one, just rock up to the event. And I've, I know so many people have done this. They go to an event. They just start taking photos. They just yeah. start taking videos of this one athlete. Yeah. And they'll do one of two things. They'll go up to them. If it's a photo, you go, hey man, love your content. This, I took this photo of you. Would you like it? 
right? I'll airdrop to you right now. And then there are those on the video side who will not say anything, right? They'll go home, yeah. make a sick reel, yeah. send it to them, post it. Like, hey, man, like, I did this for you for free. Yeah. If you'd be interested in working on something a little yeah. bit more consistent, I'd, I'd love to do See, it. See, I'd argue it's more effective. I was just about yeah. to say I would prefer to do yeah. it that way. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. then you've got something for your portfolio. Yeah. Um, that's why I, I, I used to shoot, like, London Fashion Week out on the streets and just take portraits of, mm. like, cool people dressed up really cool mm-hmm. like going in and out of shows and i'd post them and they'd tag them and they'd be like oh can i repost this and that's how like i got a couple of clients because they saw that and they were like oh mm. can you shoot this for us and so like if there's stuff going on like get out there and shoot it i think that's definitely like really important and it's accessible like there's stuff going on all the time especially in the cities in london and that that's that's how i got my foot in the door yeah. as well i would just take photos i, I would used to go to um it's not FIBA. What's the other? Oh, Body Power. Body Power. I used yeah, to go Body X, Power yeah. a lot and yeah. just film the athletes there as well. Yeah. And then edit, drop it to them. Yeah. That's where Gymshark started as well, right? When they first did the Body Power Expo. Yeah. When the they. Very first time. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, very, yeah. very first oh, time. It's coming back to and they sold out and it was like, yeah, yeah the, the demand for it was crazy. Um, But yeah, if, if you do all of this stuff, it won't happen overnight, obviously. No. For me, I, I'm the greatest example. I failed three times before I now have a super successful company, right? It's compounding. Yeah, it's yeah. just constant, constant hard work. Um, don't feel like you need to rush it as well. Just, Do you think creatives get frustrated very yeah. easily? Just like, oh, why am I not there yet? Or like, yeah. why am I not like where that person is? And this comes back and we've talked about this on the pod before about comparing yourself and like you're following the people that you look up to and you're like, why am I shooting that yet? But like, you've got to remember like, we're all sat here and it's been like a seven, eight year journey, like realistically. Yeah. So if you're only picking up a camera now and you're a year into it, like don't be annoyed that like you're also not landing like massive clients yet because no. that's not how it works. Like, no, no. Well, I don't know if you uh, follow Alex Mose on Instagram. Alex? Alex or Mose. He's like no. a business. He's, wow, one, of these motiv- to he's, he's one of these motivational <laughs> people. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get it up. Um, he talks about how there's certain things that are infinite games. And so mm. some things like marriage, fitness, like your career, it's like the, the winning is just staying in it. Like you don't win marriage or win a relationship or mm. win fitness. The point is just to maintain it yeah. and keep it just going. Just show up. Just yeah. Show up. And yeah. so that's how I try to see yeah. our work. I like, like, as I long like as that, you're still yeah. freelancing, you're not like on the street. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe yeah, you yeah. are on the street, but at least you're still in the industry or whatever. Maybe yeah. that's a win. I don't know. But just staying in it and... And just, no, again, not, it's not chipping away, to... isn't it? It's always just chipping because away. Because then that way, if you don't have any, any income for like two months or four months, you're still like, oh, well, just part of being in the industry and growing a business. And Also, yeah, I, wouldn't, and I wouldn't, unless you've got a portfolio under your belt, I didn't do this, so this is really hypocritical. <laughs> but like... <laughs> yeah, but you've learned though. You've yeah, learned, no, so. but like, if you don't have a portfolio under your belt, like I went straight into it, like I sold my car and I was like, right, yep. I don't have a portfolio, <laughs> but I'm doing this full time, which was just silly. <laughs> But like, if you can get a part-time job or like go from full-time to part-time and pick up a camera more and shoot and get to the point where the demand for the work is so much that you know you can make the switch successfully, then like, that's probably like a smarter approach finance-wise. I mean, you can just straight up jump off a cliff if you want and like, it's a lot and it's intense and it's scary, but like there are ways of going around it that might be like get a part-time job in a coffee shop whilst so you've got enough money to make rent you know so those quieter months are a little more cushioned if you like before mm. you're then full-time in it like i would say that's also like worth definitely considering as well yeah the main thing that i did i worked as a pt yeah and i also did part-time after i left full-time pt yeah. to pursue it yeah shit not like it's great i've got good clients but it's not paying everything yeah went back to do part-time at holland and barrett retail yeah. right and every money that I'd get from there, I'd put it aside to buy a lens, to buy an attachment, yeah, yeah. to buy this, to buy that. Yeah. And then eventually just keep growing the network from there. Yeah, yeah. So I can't say like I went straight into freelance and it was successful. Like, yeah. Definitely not. Like I saved up six to eight months worth of emergency cash. And I was lucky at the time I wasn't paying rent yeah. anywhere. I was still living with my parents. Yeah. So I could afford to do that yeah. quite comfortably. Smart. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Smart no, decision. no, no, yeah. exactly. Um, the last five years I've been getting hit crazy with rent. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, again, like all of that is a combination of just like, like you said, showing up every day, yeah. staying in the game consistent. Acknowledge that you're going to have really, really bad times. 
Yeah. But it's the bad times that challenge us, right? That yeah. like and that make the good times so sweet. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I before I even sat here, like May and June, horribly quiet. One yeah. shoot. Yeah. And I've got editors to pay. I've got other camera ops to pay. Yeah. And I'm like, shit, man, like I ain't got no money for rent. I yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But then it's like, well, actually, no, I do. I've got the emergency cash that I've yeah. built up through the time and I've it's also just about to yeah. ask about emergency that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emergency fund. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And in the last where are we july 6 yeah. in the last week i've booked in three projects that have paid 10k yeah and it's like i'm up yeah you're happy <laughs> yeah. i'm happy yeah, again yeah, right yeah, yeah. but it, it's more just you know that that's also very quickly i want to touch on like the difference between being freelance and having to register the company if times get really really bad and it fails and you you know you owe money you're in overdraft whatever as a company you can obviously declare bankruptcy and oh, and abolish declare that. bankruptcy yeah 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 oh, really sorry can we put the video of michael scott saying that i Declare bankruptcy. Have you seen the US oh, office? Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where yeah, yeah, he walks yeah, in, yeah. He's like, I declare bankruptcy. I, I had no clue where he. <laughs> I was like, I just told Matt like a really compelling information, and he's like, That's, I'm bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I needed no, to hear. No, 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 he right. was giving us some well, really we, good social we, content. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, 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 I was, I was just thinking was about like, the social cut. Yeah. Can we play? He, Michael Scott walks into the room and he just screams it in front of the office. Yeah, carry on. That's amazing. That's really good. Um. But yeah, like everything that we've spoken about and everything that, you know, the tips that we've given and, and the stories that we've shared. Yeah. That's what helped me to be able to go from a place from making pennies as a freelancer to be able to, in the first year of leaving and going back into freelance, to be able to triple my annual gross income. Yeah. And like, that's mental. As a yeah. freelancer, when you think about that, it's like, if I could even touch that money, that's that's a really, really hard thing to do. Yeah, yeah. But you have to understand, eventually you find your rhythm, you find your worth, yeah. you find where you're best suited yeah. to make that happen. Yeah. For some people, making the bare minimum is okay because you're doing what you enjoy yeah. and that's great. For others though, you realize, I have a special set of skills. Yeah. I'm a problem solver. This is how I'm able to charge the worth of what I charge. Yeah. Because if you come to me with a problem, and you know if you can solve this problem, it's going to make your company 10K, 20K, 100K, whatever it is, just through this one project. Yeah. That's what my worth is. Yeah. That's what I do you're, for you. He, you're like him. He's yeah. very on it yeah. with that kind of shit. Oh, I love everything you say. Like, yeah. on, on, yeah. You're like so cutthroat. And obviously, Matt, you're a yeah. little bit, you know, I'm you're like really devil's weird. advocate. Yeah. Like. <laughs> We're very different. That's interesting yeah. because we. it's hard to know when you're in it. No, but you're you're, you're very like, so. I, I would say I'm. Uh, you're very like business headed. And like I'm charging this much because this is how much it's worth for the company. Mm. Whereas I'm just like a bit more, just a bit more. Just like yeah, cool. Like if it's a sick project, I just want to get creative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you're a lot more like business headed, I'd say. Okay, okay. I'm getting better though. Yeah, yeah. We've had a few conversations about it, but I think that's one of the main things is we well we spoke about it in one of the episodes where we think when you first get into it, you're like all creative. And over the course of time, you start to realize that probably side. probably should have spent 80% 8 of my time learning the business side mm. and the other 20% of creative will get me the rest of the way yeah. because you can, again, pay other people to do it. And if you know more business stuff, you know you can pay people to do it. Yeah. And so it's just all that information of- So again, yeah. strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. I know yeah. that I'm really good at talking with people yeah, yeah. and solving problems. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll be able to go on Zooms and meet a person and say, what's your project? Cool, we'll do this. I'll sort out the team. I'll sort out, send you the invoice. This is how much it is. Yeah. Nine out of 10 times as well. When you when you start using the the language of we can solve this for you, we can do that for you. And when you become VAT registered as well, yeah. when clients see that, they're actually like, well, actually, you know what? This guy's actually pretty legit. Yeah. It's a full-blown company. Yeah, yeah, it's a company, yeah, yeah. right? Well, and if, that's, you've got, if you've got registered, it means that you're good because you have to be earning a certain amount to be able like to It's like 85 or yeah. something like that, yeah, yeah. In, in the, on a continually yearly basis. Mm. Yeah. So first yeah. year was really great, guys. <laughs> if you see me like on the street next year, it's yeah. because it's really <laughs> fucking bad. Yeah. Um, but I know that won't happen because of all the failures I've had before yeah. and all the knowledge I've gained along, yeah. uh, along yeah. the way. And no. It won't happen. I appreciate that advice. It's very good. And I want to give one little bit of advice as well before we sign off but it would be talk to other creatives i think that's so important so like if you're making the jump from uh, like full-time job into the freelance creative life like get a like creative network around you chat to other people chat to people that have done it in the past like go for coffee with them speak to them it's like so important i met with one of my mates josh the other day i know he listens to the pod and i 
first went to him for like advice when I was starting out like four or five years ago and we met up again the other day and it's like so nice how far we both come and now he's like like I just did like this Puma campaign I was telling him about that and we were talking about how I'd have dreamed of like that four years ago when we were last having a chat but now he's doing like even bigger stuff with the paychecks are massive and it's just mm. like cool well I want to be where you are mm. like he's a bit older than me so it's like this it's a nice like full circle moment again and having those people around you is like that's so important because else you're just isolated so make sure you speak to other people don't be scared to drop people a dm ask to go meet for a coffee like find other people that are like you because like that that community vibe is like something you need and is invaluable yeah i'll just echo that james yeah. matthews yeah he was like the first guy that gave me one of my first paid jobs yeah i was assisting him he taught me everything like how to talk with clients how yeah. to set up how to travel and all this stuff right yeah so without him, yeah, exactly as you said, like yeah. I would have probably delayed myself by about six months. Yeah, but the knowledge that he gave me, yeah, yeah, definitely because of him that I'm here today. Sweet, you did just spark a little bit of a question. What do you think about coffee meetings and coffee? Because <sighs> we put a real one, yeah. and on TikTok it got quite a bit of. I think people just thought we talk about coffee well, in was, general. Yeah, people just thought we people about were coffee. like coffee's amazing. Like, so, so I'm you, like, like, I I'm like go in person to like meet for a coffee and like show face and get to know that person. Cameras like it's a waste of time. I don't you can yeah. just meet on Zoom. I don't think it's a waste of time if it's with other creatives because it's almost like catching up with someone else in your industry. But coffee, clients. coffee with potential clients. Like, if you've got a problem, I'm. It's like a plumber. Like a, a plumber doesn't have a coffee with you before he fixes your sink. It's like I'll just like yeah. you're either going to drown and I'm here to solve it. Yeah. You don't need to have a coffee with me beforehand. Yeah. We can have a coffee after and get yeah. to know each other a little bit uh, better. Yeah. Obviously, it's a bit like yeah, it's touch and go. You yeah. got to know who you're dealing with. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty much in agreement with with Cameron on this sure. one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. It's, but I think it's a little bit different when it comes to like. I don't know. I'm probably gonna spark something now. But no, like, I would say I'm no. I'm like more like uh, I'll go meet for a coffee because if I get on with someone, like, I would say I make quite a lot of friends through my like job. Whereas I feel like you don't as much. I don't mean that. In a, I don't mean that. In a ba- <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way. What's he trying to say? No, no, no. I don't mean that in a bad way. But like, I'll stay in touch with like other people, like clients that I've worked with, and like I'm still friends with them and have been for years um, because I probably went for that coffee. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? And I yeah, built that personal relationship face to face. No, yeah, but I mean, like you would, you wouldn't meet them at a coffee first. You would meet them on set or wherever, and then you would go for coffee with them to maintain the relationship later. Mm. So I would do that as well. I agree. Yeah, I agree. But like, I wouldn't go for a coffee first unless there's obviously yeah. a business conversation. But would you go to a, for a coffee to talk about that problem? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wouldn't just go for a coffee just for. Well, I don't. Obviously, like, you're going to talk about the work well, and well, the business. No, well, like you're not just going for a coffee it, to talk it about depends, the Wimbledon score. It depends. School. It depends. Because I have had clients where they'll be like, "Oh, are you free for a coffee?" And it's like in central London, and it's like that is. You, it, we're running a business. Like I can't just like go yeah, into but London. Yeah, like, talk to you about. They want to meet to talk about the problem that yeah. you're going to solve. Why do you need to meet me in person to talk about <laughs> yeah, the problem? Step in. I'll what, give yeah, you. Go, go. I'll give you the perfect example, right? <laughs> so uh, what I was about to say that might spark something, right? Uh, in, a, in a negative way um i've noticed with photographers it's very normal to meet up prior yeah and discuss things yeah and that's fine because you're taking a single frame yeah right for their their you know product launch yeah, npd yeah. whatever it is yeah video is a little bit more techy it's not just one frame it's several hundreds of thousands yeah and they'll come to you and think, i've got this idea I don't know how to storyboard it i don't know how to you know go yeah, around sure, getting yeah. someone and i'll sit there in the coffee and i've done this before and i'll go cool what you need to do is we could probably film somewhere like i'm going to use marble arch as an example again we'll film in marble arch there's this really nice wall here you then film you know we place a camera here we go and i'm yeah. literally explaining point for point how to do this project for them yeah at the end of the coffee i've spoken for like 40 minutes to an hour they go okay cool yeah um i'll email you and we'll try and get something booked in yeah i then see that they've done the shoot without you without me yeah. and they've done exactly what i told them to do yeah so i just gave them the idea yeah the idea and i just basically paid them through my own time and knowledge and experience over the years how to do that yeah for free right mm. um i'm very brutal sometimes people clients will say i've got this great idea can we talk about it on zoom cool i'll give you 20 minutes talk about it for 20 minutes they go oh yeah this is amazing this is amazing could you just like send us over a storyboard and then maybe we can look to explore how to feel. And I got, I'm not doing anything more for you 
until you pay up. Yeah. I will send you the invoice. I'll send yeah. you the quote. Yeah. If you're happy and you send the deposit or you send the full payment. Yeah. Then we're we'll best friends. We'll talk about it. Yeah. If I don't know you, if you're just a first time yeah, client, yeah, yeah. that's what I'll do if you're a prospect. Yeah. If we've worked together on multiple projects, yeah. I don't mind having a chat with you in London if I'm there. I live yeah. in Cambridge, so that's yeah, yeah. a mission for me, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But now that I'm moving back into Central, I might do that, yeah, yeah. but with regulars only. But again, you've also got to understand who you're dealing with. Yeah. If it's someone from GQ, right? Or like Nike, you're like, that's a pretty big deal. It's worth your time. It's yeah. worth yeah. your time. It's very yeah. situation dependent. Yeah. 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 But yeah. nine out of 10 that. times, I would agree with Cameron and <laughs> yeah, say, yeah. nah, don't do that. Okay, fair. Yeah. I think as well, because if you value your time, they all, it almost like resonates with them. Like, you know, like they all value it as well. Mm. And it's that thing of, that's like you're thinking, like you were talking about how you gave away like some of the details of how to do a shoot. You're giving away like your thinking and your strategy. Yeah. And that's like your bread and butter of like how mm. you, because everyone thinks differently. Yeah. If I was paid as a consultant, mm. yeah, or as a like a creative director, and that was my job, mm. I'd do that. Obviously, yeah. I'm being paid to do that. I I'd, I'd love to be a creative consultant, you know, yeah. something that I'd like it, to do. Yeah, I've been thinking about it as well. Yeah. It feels quite easy actually. Yeah. I don't need to I've own met gear. With, I've met with mates and they've got this brand, and I'm like, yeah, you could do this. You should try this. You should do this. And I sit there and I'm like, I'd love to do this as a job. Yeah. Just and then like, they slap you a bill for like a thousand pounds. Yeah, that's my time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 just like it'd be sick. That's what people do when they get, I think you can obviously do it on the side, but when you get a lot older and you've been in the industry for like 30 years, yeah. that's what people tend to do, like uh, yeah, I'll give it educating years, yeah. the younger generation and all that. <laughs> or nowadays you might just start a podcast or a YouTube channel yeah. and do it that way. Well, Shout out late invoices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, on that note. Do you have any late invoices? Uh, I do actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It always happens, right? It does, yeah. yeah. Um, and I know, and obviously one of the recent episodes you said what you do about that. Yeah. But um, yeah. do you charge a late fee? Do you charge 50% up front? I, so I do 50% up front. I do the late fee, but it's already in the terms and conditions of the booking. Yeah. And I say it's in conjunction with um, 50% of a full day rate plus uh, the interest um, from the England bank rate of interest. Yeah. So that's on top of it as well. And that's part of your like statutory right to be yeah. able to charge that for a late invoice. Right, yeah. Because you've obviously served the product yeah, um, yeah. and they have not paid yeah yeah so that's your right but then it gets techie obviously if you yeah, need to pursue lawsuits or whatever yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's not worth the money yeah but uh you said it best like everyone's human then one or two days late just a little nudge yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but i did have to charge interest on one shoot yeah. um they weren't happy but they obviously understood it as yeah. a business that's why it's credible to be a registered mm. company versus yeah. a freelancer yeah true there's true. plenty of benefits as well as um yeah yeah detriments to being a business but i find it helps interesting Okay, well, let's wrap the episode there. Yeah, yeah. This has been amazing, by the way. Thank yeah. you oh, so much. Thank you. For, thank you for your time. You know, I really in appreciate and, it. And yeah. we, they can find you, listeners can find you on Instagram and stuff. Where? What's uh, Instagram, everything's pretty much just CJ Ducker. Yeah. Big yeah. believer of obviously securing your handle. So YouTube, yeah. I don't post in there, but it's <laughs> CJ Ducker as well. Yeah. Instagram. Fred's yeah. as well. I, I've yeah. got like oh, 14 Fred. million 198 is my Fred number. Is it? But yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, Did you see that Mark Zuckerberg, is, Mark Zuckerberg is number one? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Profile. I'm like, that's yeah, such a flex. Yeah, it's a big flex. Yeah. Yeah, obviously, we'll link all the uh, socials in the show notes below. And if you have a website or anything like that, we can just see you. Well. Yeah. But okay. no, mate, pleasure yeah. having you on. Yeah. And Thanks can't wait to see what you do over the next year. Thanks, guys. It's going to be a good one. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for listening, guys. Uh, we hope you enjoyed that episode. Um, if you liked what you heard or what you watched, be sure to like, subscribe, drop us a comment, DM us on Instagram for anything you want to hear. Um, and we'll see you in the next episode.